Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the press. And a good afternoon to our fellow countrymen and women. After three months of trial in the highest court of this land, others refer to it as the apex court, the Supreme Court has today finally handed down the verdict of the court. And so far as the 2013 election petition, 2020 election petition is concerned. It was a unanimous decision of all the nine justices, seven. seven justices of the Supreme Court. I want to highlight a few of the things that the justices said for purposes of emphasis and general understanding. It was a two hour long rendition, so I cannot do all, so I'll just highlight the salient points for brevity. Your Lordships started the delivery. Of course, the judgment of the court was read by none other than the Chief Justice of the Republic, Justice Kwesi Enin Yeboah. They drew a distinction between the election petition of 2013 and that of 2020. Whilst the election petition of 2013 mounted a challenge to the validity of the election and called for the annulment of over 4 million votes due to overvoting irregularities, lack of biometric verification, and absence of signature of presiding officers. The 2020 election petition was basically a challenge against the declaration of the results and not, emphasis, not the validity of the election. It was the declaration of the results that the petitioner sought to challenge. But the courts held that the declaration of the results is done in consonance with the data provided by first respondent. That is the total number of votes cast, the total number, the total number of valid votes cast, and the percentage of the total number of valid votes cast, and not the total number of votes cast. I want to stress the difference. It's a percentage of the total number of valid votes cast and not the total number of votes cast. And by the data provided, the justices were left in no dispute that second respondent, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana, and still the Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces had crossed the threshold of more than 50% plus of the total number of valid votes cast. In consonance or in tandem with Article 63.3 of the Constitution 1992. The court had a word or two to say about the testimony of the witnesses for the petitioner. And you heard the court rightly say that the petitioner was under no obligation to offer evidence himself by the presentation of a witness statement and mounting the witness box to testify. So was it that there was no compelling reason why first respondent and second respondent should have been made by all means 
to also adduce evidence in the trial. So there is parity of justice. Your Lordship said that the evidence of PW1, PW2, and PW3, that is Dr. Myself, Dr. Michael Pesa White, and Mr. Johnson Asie Dunkit, and Mr. Rojo, Robert Joseph Metanunu. And I'll borrow the language of the court. It's not my language. The justices said their evidence was fanciful. And the least said about the evidence of these two persons, the better. That is not my language. That is the language of the Chief Justice of the Republic and of the court. Why did they say so? From the evidence that used at the trial, their own evidence, they have certified 13 of the 16 regional coalition results. And when they realized that the other three results were not favorable to their cause, they abandoned ship and left the national coalition room of first respondent, what hitherto was called the strong room. Your Lordship said they abdicated their duty and their evidence that they were tricked by first respondent's chairperson to vacate the room before the declaration of results was unworthy of consideration and that they should blame themselves for abandoning posts and not shift blame onto the doorstep of the first respondent's chairperson. This is the language of the court. In fact, the court also said that they had two additional agents so that even if they left, the two of them left, the two additional agents could have done what they should have done as agents in the collision room. PW2 and PW3 were under no obligation to leave the room. And the fact that they decided to leave cannot, they cannot complain of the declaration made in the error. Now, when it came to the star witness, Johnson Asiedu in Ketia. This is what the court said. We did not come to court to challenge the figures declared by first respondent, but that the figures declared contain errors, and in affecting the errors, the EC chairperson unilaterally declared the results contrary to Article 23 and 296 of the Constitution, 1992. The lawsuits pose a rhetorical question that what was the effect of this? And the answer was forthright. The lawsuit said the petitioner did not pre present any compelling evidence that there were breaches of discretion of Articles 23 and 296 of the Constitution 1992, and that errors by administrative tribunals are not matters for determination by the Supreme Court. That challenge lies squarely with the High Court. And that the discretionary power, if not exercised according to law, does not invalidate the valid votes cast at the election. And that those errors cannot amount to an invocation of the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court.
I'll shortly, in the course of my delivery, tell you some significant portions of the evidence which were quoted extensively by the justices to found the reasons for the judgment. Now, there were five issues that were settled between the parties for the consideration of the court. The first one was whether or not the petition disclosed any reasonable cause of action. And the others followed. It's whether or not the petitioner, the second respondent, obtained more than 50% plus of the total number of valid votes cast at the election. And whether or not the alleged vote pardon and errors substantially affected or materially affected the outcome of the election. There were other ancillary reliefs of a breach of Article 23 and 296 of the Constitution 1992, a mandatory injunction placed on the EC, and also an injunction to restrain the president from holding himself out as president of the republic, and for that matter, carrying out his duties as the first gentleman of the land. It is instructive to state that the courts decisively determine these issues in favor of the respondents. Indeed, indeed, to do fidelity to the Supreme Court and the truth, we cannot run away from the fact that the Supreme Court did not agree with the first and second respondents on the first issue that the petition did not disclose any reasonable cause of action. But they were quick to also say that the petition will not be determined alone on that issue, and that the totality of the evidence will be called into play to sustain whether or not the plaints by the petitioner that none of them, that is the petitioner and second respondent, crossed more than the 50% threshold as mandated by Article 63.3 of the 1992 Constitution. Now, this is what the justices of the Supreme Court said to clarify and put to rest this funny issue. Now, the actual total number of valid votes cast at the election, which was admitted in paragraph 12 of the petition and confirmed by the star witness, Asiye Dunketia, was 30,121,000 111, 30 million, 121,111 votes. Now the court also said that a party is always bound by his pleadings. And the only way the party can free itself from his pleadings is by way of an amendment. The admitted position of the petitioner, which was unraveled under court examination by second respondent's counsel, the venerable Anthony Akoto Ampa. I bet most of you didn't know the first name. As the venerable Anthony Akoto Ampa. When the video clip was played in court, now, second respondent garnered 6,730,413 votes. Petitioner garnered 6,000, 6,000,000, 
214,899 votes. And the percentage of the valid votes, of the votes obtained against the total number of valid votes cast came to 51 decimal 295 percent for second respondent His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Kufuado and 47 decimal 366 percent for the petitioner John Dramani Mahama. Meaning that second respondent had crossed more than the 50 percent plus of the total number of valid votes cast at the election, which was in contradistinction to what the petitioner had been saying all along. In the first place, before this petition was filed, the petitioner was bold to say that he had won the election. And the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC gave the petitioner a percentage of 50 decimal 15 percent. You heard it when the video clip was played. Indeed, Sami JV, a communication officer of the NDC, hailed John Dramani Mahama as the president elect. This position taken by the Supreme Court was not done in a vacuum. It was elicited from cross-examination of the star witness PW1 by the Venerable Akoto Ampao. And you heard the rendition which was lucidly given by the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court also considered the Techiman South constituency presidential election results, which became a Tony issue in the declaration. It was the first respondent's chairperson alluded to the fact that even if the Techiman South, what's happening? Even if the Techiman South election results, Presidential results were added to the results at the time of the declaration. The second respondent still won the presidential election by more than 50% of the valid votes cast at the election. Now, the declaration of the results was tendered in evidence by the petitioner as Exhibit A. And Exhibit A clearly showed that the votes at the Tichiman South constituency and that without the Tichiman South constituency election results, second respondent crossed the threshold and obtain more than 50% plus of the total number of valid votes cast. The addition of the Techiman South constituency results was played out in the manner following. The total number of registered voters in that constituency was 128,000 and 18, but 99,436 valid votes were cast at the election. And out of that number, the petitioner John Ramani Mahama received 52,034 of the valid votes cast, which put his total number of valid votes cast at 6,266,000. 923 votes, which represented 46.379%. Second respondent, Nanado Danko Akufuado, received 
46,379 votes. Moving is total number of valid vote cast to 6 million seven hundred and seventy six thousand seven hundred and ninety two which gave him a percentage of fifty one decimal two nine five percent meaning that second respondent had crossed the threshold of fifty percent plus one. The Supreme Court justices also held that, in fact, and indeed, the results of the Techiman South constituency presidential election was well known to the petitioner before the petition was filed. And for that matter, even an exclusion or inclusion of the Techiman South presidential results wouldn't have made any difference at all to the results as declared by the EC's chairperson. And now that even if the total valid votes, all the votes are added, Nanado Dankwa still received 6,730,413 total number of valid vote casts, and that of a percentage of 30 million 249,129 votes would have given him 50.798% votes cast. As to the alleged vote pardon and the wrong aggregation of votes, the Supreme Court dismissed those allegations with consummate ease. Indeed, if you added the votes that they themselves said were pardoned, in one instance is 6,622, another instance is 5,562, and then when it mattered most, they initially started with 32 constituencies and it dwindled, they started with 32 constituencies and it dwindled to 26 constituencies and the vote pardon came to 4,693. Now the courts were clear that these votes, even if taken out of second respondents' votes garnered, did not emphasis, did not materially or substantially affect the validity of the election. The Supreme Court also said that the alleged vote pardon was not supported by any credible evidence. And you can't rely on infractions that affected votes at polling stations when the votes are validly cast, administrative errors or mistakes by electoral officers can never and will never change the sovereign will of the voters who cast their votes at the election. And your lordships quoted a passage from Lord Denning to support that position of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, in short and in brief, this is the thrust of the judgment of the highest court of our land. And your lordships posited that one cannot ignore the substantive truth of an election and resort to innocuous errors committed by first respondents chairperson in the declaration of the results and on that position call for a rerun of the election. Your lordships 
also stated that the petitioner was not able to bring one single piece of evidence to show that the allegation that none of them, that is the petitioner and the second respondent, cross the 50 plus of the total number of valid vote casts to warrant a rerun of the election. The law justices of the Supreme Court have spoken. We we'll entreat, we we'll entreat all Ghanaians to abide by the decision of our highest court of the land. We thank our good friends on the other side for their bravery in mounting this petition. Albeit, we all found that the petition indeed contained nothing but factual errors and inaccuracies. Those were in the words of the court, not mine. Litigation must always come to an end. I want to believe that this is the end of the 2013 2020 election petition. I'm, I'm, I'm fixated with 2013, so spare me. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, if there are any questions, we are prepared. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that.